absolute staple on the Liquid roster, and he has been so consistent for them recently. Yeah, Quas. Yesterday he got to play Rise, which was probably a pleasant surprise. Rise played him. He was banned in the first over. game. The spell rotation, <laughs> thanks to Rise's passive, and the ability to chain up to four roots together at once <laughs> is rather devastating. I wonder if Gravity will end up banning that away. What I, what's interesting here is Team Liquid fairly targeted in their bands. Thresh for Bunny Foo Foo, Fizz for Keen. Not choosing to play any of these ban one of the main supports game. I guess Thresh could be considered a main support, but you still yep. have Alistair and Nautilus. Uh, then also the jungle game between Rek'Sai and Gragas. None of those bans being seen here. Not at all. Dominate's been across three junglers already. Gragas, Nunu, Rek'Sai, so he has had success there. No worries if he does get banned out. Hecarim taken away from Haunter. He's always providing a bit of aggression from that top lane. Doesn't seem like the organization was yet there coming out of the lane for him. Yeah. He can usually win that all by himself. His mechanics very high for him. I remember talking to St. Vicious for the first time. He's like, Haunter's the real deal. That's all he Ooh. told me when I asked about him. So The real deal. Be the real deal once again for your team. Gragas does get banned. We finally see a jungler out on that list. And it will not be Piglet's Callista. He's been playing that quite well. We saw that first ban from Gravity. Now on to the picks. What is the priority here? There's quite a bit left up, and that's going to be Dominate grabbing Rek'Sai once again. Super interesting. Basically, Gravity dared Team Liquid with a choice between the Gragas and Rek'Sai bans. Whether they have to take the one jungler that is still available or risk giving Rise over to the other side. I'd imagine we're going to see Alistair rise here from Gravity. This also goes a little deeper because Move uh, has been playing some of the other junglers. He's played Nunu and Lee Sin, aside yep. from his Rex Rek'Sai game yesterday. So it's not like they're yeah, he's been a three they're three. trapped into playing the Gragas Rek'Sai game. I'm waiting. There it is. Rise gets locked in. That is a lock in. They may just take the Alistar as well, who's seen himself on the ban list quite a bit, bringing himself back into the ga that game, being chaotic in team fights with his ultimate. Just can't take him down. Good pick up here for Gravity. Power picks. Mm. If I ever saw some. Rise in particular, he was 100% pick banned in Europe. Yeah. Uh, yesterday he was able to make it through the ban phase three times. He won two games and lost. He actually lost one uh, when Balls played him on Cloud Nine. Right. Especially if Quas is playing a Maokai into that. We're probably seeing lane swaps the majority of the game, or Dominate is committing to camping the Rise early game before he can get his feet under him and get some real items going. Because if that doesn't happen, and Rise is able to get to Rod of Ages and Tyr, and he ever sees a 1v1 situation with Maokai, yeah. he will kill him. Still a gankable dude. He's still good on Rise. He's only got a stun for, a root rather, for one person. Unless it's late game, then he's got everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so you get a stun, a root. You get a root. You get a root. See what gravity decides to go with. Both teams really taking their time here through this pick ban phase. Liquid wanting to keep that perfect 4 0 record. Gravity wanting to make it 3 1 for their victory yesterday over Cloud9. They got to be feeling quite good. I was talking to Alltech and he said only a few things to shore up. Just some communication. Are we going to see move play Jarvan? Yes. All right. Yes, we are, actually. So Jarvan Sivir locked in. Jarvan, a bit of a, I'm going to call him an old school jungler because he was played before the Cinder Hulk meta kicked in. Move may still go Cinder Hulk Jarvan, but he really gets beat up. Think about Jarvan. He gets super beat up in the first three or four levels, and then he can start having effectiveness with his ganks. So it's almost like he's got just slightly after early game pressure yeah. and strong ganks. Before then, he's actually quite weak. Of course, it's another jungler that can build Sightstone and has good escapes when going in to kill or place wards, which is basically appeared to be Move's focus in all of their games. I also like that synergy it has with Rise. You bunch in a bump of, bunch of people, throw your alt on, desperate power, and just AOE the crap out of the entire team. Again, Phoenix goes for Cassiopeia. I believe that'll be a third play for him, or rather, yeah. Three out of four games. Three out of four games, right. I, was I also... I also really like the Vayne here for Piglet. Heck Vayne's yeah. something that's been making a pretty big comeback in pro play. I think one of the reasons Vayne sees pro play is because all the AD carries just like playing Vayne so much. But beyond that, 
uh, especially against Jarvan, it's a free wall in team fights. Jarvan cannot deal with Vayne. Right. If you try and close down on a Vayne with an ultimate, Vayne will literally stun you against your own wall and then tumble out of it. And mm -hmm. you just feel awful as the Jarvan player. So uh, basically eliminating some of the late game effectiveness of Jarvan by picking that Vayne. I feel like Piglet has the skills to do everything you just said. Keen could be going back to the Malphite in the mid lane. Actually, one of the stats here on my sheet is, what will Keen pick? It's just a question. What will Keen pick? And it actually looks like it's going to be back to the Urgot in the mid lane. He keeps the variety going, has not gone back to a single champion yet, as now he brings out the Urgot. Well, he was the first before Urgot really caught on. Yeah, yeah. It's been dying off significantly lately. Yeah. A lot of people think there's some better blind picks you can throw in the mid lane. People have learned how to neutralize it in the bottom lane a little bit. Against Cassiopeia, I feel like that's a tricky matchup in a lot of ways for the Urgot. Keen, of course, is the expert on the Urgot matchups. Mm -hmm. Swap somebody into that Alistar Rise if they're still on the back line. Oh, there's a lot of crowd control. So much you can on do the gravity, with this gravity team. Comp. All the, the disengage they're ready for, though, on Team Liquid's side. Get a good petrifying gaze in there from Cassiope, and you can turn around to fight immediately. Really like this. We always see Team Liquid coming out with somewhat of a skirmish. We can always kind of fight composition so they can get themselves ahead in the game. Peter and Cop smiles all around, hugs as well, knowing each other very well. The teams knowing each other very well as they have all played together for a very long time. Yeah, I know everyone's excited for the TSM versus CLG match, but this is a 3-0 Team Liquid team taking on a 2-1 Gravity team. History with the Curse Academy team yep. coming in there. Piglet and Team Liquid looking great. There was a lot of hype for me going into this match. Let's see what happens for this match vote for the team you think will come out on top with the hashtag TLWin or hashtag GVWin. We're at LOL Esports. We'll be checking in to see how the fan vote stands in just a bit. Week two, day two, game two. We're about to head in onto the rift for another one. Let's see what these guys can do for each other. Can Liquid keep a perfect record here coming out of week two? Or will Gravity be able to thwart that? We're on the rift. Yes, we are. And Gravity had such a clever level one play against Cloud9 yesterday. I wonder if Cop, as the new coach, has been meticulously planning these openings especially now that we have this Rise versus Maokai game and the early game is so incredibly pivotal uh, for Hauntzer to be able to get access to farm. And also, do they have any plans to make up for Jarvan being somewhat fragile if he has to solo his own jungle camps? Sometimes Jarvan excels in a double jungle situation uh, because he can just clear through faster, get his jungle item upgrade, and then be generally okay. Whereas Team Liquid has a lot more versatility. Maokai can start any camp, clear it with saplings dominate with Rek'Sai, can easily sustain and stay at full health without backing into the base. So it will be quite a testament to Gravity if they can win this early game, this level one, the first three minutes of the game, yeah. uh, because I feel like the champion advantages as far as what they can do and the choices they have falls into Team Liquid's favor. Also for Gravity, if they keep doing it, it will definitely kind of reassure that they do always have something on the plate for the beginning of the game. Move wants to stay aggressive. We heard in his video that he feels comfortable being the one that can engage for the team. And if they're on board, it's always going to work. I can't say always. <laughs> It'll hopefully give them what they it want. It always has a chance of working. It always has a chance of working. Especially Phoenix with the blue the Cassiopeia lead. skin. I think it's blue Siren or something? Siren. It's my favorite Cassiopeia skin. Even though there's yeah. newer, better ones. They're all... I think they're oh, a little like too the, crazy. I like the blue one. I like it. Simple. Looks good. Oh, check this out. Oh, man. Again, gravity was something smart. Mm -hmm. Piglet was up there to freeze the lane, but now he's trapped between an Alistair and a Sivir. He's going to have to burn R something or just take a bunch of damage. Full blade hits it. He's going to try to walk yeah. out of this one. I like the fact that he didn't blow flash, but this means it's going to have to be safe. He also had to skill condemn, so that hurts him yeah, as well. You normally want to be able to skill Q and W. Especially if he's pushed the turret. Usually you get a good tumble reset in to keep those minions in your favor. Yeah. Uh, Gravity did a very extended pull. Four moves, Jarvan. They mm -hmm. double jungled the red buff. Uh, so, once again, I feel like Gravity out mind game right there. They were expecting a freeze by one man. That Alistair move only works if there's only one dude in that brush. If they're blind checking against John of Vane, uh, it can become dangerous. So... Great job by Gravity right there. I'm mean, just missing one. He should be able to clean up the rest, though, but quickly pushed in here by Alltech and Bunny Fufu. 
We'll see how the rest of the lanes play out since we do get matched up just on this top side. Yeah, the top side matchup, Altec should be able to shove in because Pickett had to start condemn. A uh, bottom lane is where it will get really interesting. So you can see how Chunk move is, even with the extended pull on yeah. the red buff. So if he does not want to conflict with Rek'Sai right now, I will dominate healthier. But again, because of the pull, move was faster down into the river. Mm -hmm. He got the ward, which now Dominate is sitting on, yeah. and then he was able to clear Scuttle Crab. And Dominate didn't get eyes on Scuttle either. They do try to go for that gank onto Haunter in the early part of the game. Cannot close the gap. He was ready for it. All thanks to move. Now he's doing his own bit of that towards the mid lane. Doesn't hit the flag and drag, but we'll get the rinse and repeat if he wants. On that flash, they can come back just till about eight and a half minutes. Plus he gets control of both scuttle crabs. So honestly, yeah. nice job by Moves Jarvan early on in the match. Dominate missing on his gank. Of course, these early games nowadays, it's not a jungler specific thing. It is really a team game at the start. With all the wards that get placed at the start of the game, everyone has to place their trinket. The way you have different pulls, the way junglers have to be coordinated to certain lanes if we're going to see dives. Uh, overall, gravity playing that slightly better, and it gives move an edge. I think on the top lane coming out of Liquid, seems like they're just making sure they get the right amount of CS. <laughs> Hype crowd. Haunter continuously trying to push this wave in. He doesn't actually have a tier yet, so he's just doing it to make it hard here for Quas to get big on that Maokai. Already 27 to 18, though. Easily able to farm under that turret, so he's not having yeah. too much trouble. Great yeah. job by Liquid to kind of stave off this pressure. And one thing about this bottom lane, as Team Liquid goes for the Summer Split Championship, is Quas did take the Raptors at level 1, so he teleported that lane level 2, mm -hmm. whereas Hauntzer shared some experience with move on red buff and teleported to that lane less than level two. Therefore, Quas has had the experience edge on yeah. Haunter the entire time. And we'll see how big that advantage grows uh, until Haunter gets to some of his items and becomes Rise. CS discrepancy back and forth in the lane. It kind of just zigzags down the champion list. As you see, that lead by Keen in the mid and the lead by, the lead by Piglet, even though he was pushed into his turret early after getting Quite a bit of damage done to him. Keen keeping the pressure on to Phoenix. Level 5 to 4, so he's definitely going to hit his ult first. We may see a move coming back for that position reverser to make sure Keen goes down with his flash, not up yet. That'll be, or rather, Phoenix to go down. Down to the bottom lane for move. Looks like he's just going to be going for Gromp here as things are quite slow in the early game for Gravity versus Team Liquid. Yeah, definitely. Some subdued choices. It's, it makes sense the junglers have been seeing each other frequently. <laughs> Quas, that was a clever little wait and see. Haunter trying to maximize how much gold he can get before going back to base. He's sitting on 1100, but mm -hmm. be enough for tier and boots. I wonder if he wants to go Catalyst first, just for the survivability against a Rek'Sai. In which case, you need to wait for 1200 at least. May actually. I believe we saw Quas not immediately go for his tier yesterday as well when he was playing Rise. He went Health Crystal first because of yeah. the threat of dives. Right. This game's a little different. The dive would only be a two-man dive. Mm -hmm. Dominate. Coming back to see if he can get over the wall and possibly get something. They're planning the six that Phoenix just got here. Like we saw, he was a level behind Keen, so he just got that. Both junglers kind of had the same idea in mind. Move has backed, however. And he'll be back into the jungle in a few seconds here. Almost finished up fully on that Cinder Hulk. Special now to get the roam, maybe, with that, once that minion goes yeah. away. Piglet was talking about this. This is when Special may leave. Not too far for now, though. Yeah. They're actually just, still just keeping the lanes. In this matchup, it's more about uh, wanting to keep tabs on Bunny Fufu leaving. Alistair's yeah, roam good point. in mid lane Jana's is not gonna do much. substantially more dangerous than a Janna roam. Yeah, Dominate spends a fair amount of time trying to pressure lanes here. Hasn't really been able to burn any summoner spells or significant poke. But it's not all bad. Yeah, good control for the time of Phoenix's flash being down, making sure he's in the back pocket in the mid lane. Goes back for his jungle, however. It should be blue quite soon here coming in for Phoenix, so he may be able to put a little more pressure on to Keen in that mid. 46 to 65, definitely a CS in favor of Keen is 
Like you said, that's his Urgot. He knows exactly what he's doing to pretty much any champion matchup in that lane. 64 to 54 with that CS advantage for Quas is able to actually push Hauntzer out of the lane. He's out of mana. We'll see what he comes back with here actually after his first buy. There's the tier yeah. and some health. And some health. So yeah, yeah. almost the best of both worlds. Tier early, but the health that a Kalish would survive not. Isn't able to get the Catalyst passive, but he does end up buying a ton of biscuits. Mm -hmm. What's interesting here is they're actually doing a lane swap already. Right. So, Gravity, the initiators of the swap, we'll see if Team Liquid matches. If they don't match, that gives Gravity dragon control because they'd be able to teleport down with Rise and Quas would be stuck bottom lane. But we're actually seeing Team Liquid swap back, which I think is the correct choice. See, once Quas gets to the top lane, if they can make anything happen here against Hauntzer, he will also have move on his side, so Hauntzer should be safe. But like you said, that swap back to the bottom lane here could create danger for the top. Gold is still even as we approach nine minutes into the game. Piglet getting quite close to the turret. This they is clever. A hard plan and something. I don't think they know, though. They're about to be on the butt end of this. Yeah. Like Piglet's going to leave. They're going to get back down to the bottom side. Special saying, I can't guard this thing by myself. There's Boots Mobility on Alistair, so even if he walks past a ward, there's a chance he can burn a Summoner spell from Quas. They're looking to mm. turn something big here. They're just waiting a fair bit of time because they don't think Piglet would wait in that brush too long. They don't want to run into Piglet and Maokai. So let's watch this. He's running. Now they see him. Can Quas get away? There's one locked down. He actually goes towards Hauntzer, thinking the fight was going to be there. What a headbutt from Bunny Fufu -Foo to get an extra shot in from the turret. A little bit of surplus damage as they figure out who they want. Little arcane heal coming from Quas. Is too many spells were cast. They have to use the cataclysm. He heals once again from all the abilities being cast and his own. He will finally go down. He's a damn strong tree, though. Quas falls for first blood. The whole reason that took an extra 10 seconds is they were trying their damnedest to get the kill onto Hauntzer. Mm -hmm. So Mu didn't want to burn his ultimate. They wanted Hauntzer to finish, <laughs> but Quas kept auto attacking with his passive. Rise was low on mana, so he could do that. It ends up being an incredibly expensive gank for Gravity. They spend a huge amount of time and the Jarvan ultimate. At the end of the day, they ended up trading a kill on Maokai for a dragon just because that gank took so long to happen. And he's got TP to come up. I don't even know if that's worth it at that point. It is a kill on a Rise, though, and we know how crazy Rise can be. <laughs> so time will tell. Absolutely. We saw Quas, even Huni, when he played it over in the EULCS. So down 30 or so CS, nothing hugely significant, but was still able to come back in those team fights and just wreak havoc. Still expecting that once he gets that tier charged up to his Seraph. I'll have all the mana in the world to keep these fights going. 11 minutes in is just about what it took to get first blood out of these teams. Like you're we saying, it was quite measured. But then again, we got to remember, move with that vision game as well as dominate on the other side. Well, I should say special, getting the wards out. Making sure things are calm, going slow. Yeah, and you could, it, at least in that gank when they were giving the kill over to Hauntzer, mm -hmm. it, it is the correct play. And it also speaks to the mentality of move as a jungler. Uh, might get into that in a minute. There could be a, a ward fight that breaks out between X special and Fufu, because both junglers are close. These are two teams that are very formal about it, though. Yeah. This was a, a team impulse. You'd have five people already trying to fight that war. So there's an interesting comment by Saint, by Saint Vicious last year when he was on Gravity. Yeah. Uh, when LS, their former analyst who just stepped down this last week uh, for Gravity, was talking about junglers in Korea and how they're basically just secondary supports. So they build a side stone early. After they get their main jungle upgrade in a side stone, they kind of stop farming and they basically just ward, kill wards, and gank. So. If your mindset is as a secondary support, not a secondary carry, you never want to get kills. The whole support's not getting kills actually transfers to now two roles instead of just one. Mm. Because I can absolutely see uh, a more carry-oriented jungler like Meteos going in that top lane gank, and as soon as Maokai is low, you ult and get that kill. Because <laughs> you're the Jarvan and you can go carry here. Whereas Boo, even when he ulted, tried not to use many spells afterwards because he really was careful not to right. get that last hit. Uh, so and eventually ulted. Obviously, move is a Korean jungler, yeah. uh, but he is playing very much the Korean style of jungle here. Well, it cost them a little bit of time on the top side. I'm sure that instance won't come to light too many times, but we did see it hurt him for a second. 
Great he works. is hatching that ward right now. He just heads over to Hauntzer, gets the smite. Move is there as well. That would be a very nice ultimate to put down on both of them, but he chooses Dominate as he tries to get away. Flashes in, says Hauntzer. And they're oh, going to keep boy. going across. Keen comes up now. Let's see how they trade this one across. Again, it's going to be Move getting in. Move going for the auto for a bit more damage, and they do give it over to Keen, and he doesn't even miss that much in mid lane. Fantastic kill distribution right there. Hanser was able to finish off the last one. Keen comes up as well, but it all begins because of the ward placement. Having that ward in exactly yep. the right spot, completely telegraphed Team Liquid's gank intentions, and it allows Gravity to get that straight on 2v2 with Ryze, where thanks to Ryze's DPS, will pretty much always win those matchups. So. The Rise pick falling through into Gravity and the first pick Rek'Sai for Team Liquid, that champ select little game uh, is paying off for Gravity right, right now because they are the ones protecting Rise and enabling him to use his insane damage. Also going to put some thoughts into Liquid. How are they going to stop now? Move, getting bigger and bigger onto Jarvan. He is going to be able to lock down Piglet as much as he wants once these fights start. It's going to have to be a special and Piglet hip to hip when these fights come to be so he has the peel that he needs from like we said, this team that has a lot of crowd control from Gravity. Monster, you said, getting going. Still, I'm going to say behind in CS. He's actually about to even that up once he gets back in lane, most likely. Now that he's got the Rod of Ages charging up, he'll be safer to be in lane. Our mana finished up by Keen here as he gets bigger along with that Brutalizer. So, could definitely do some big damage to Phoenix. He should be sitting on quite a bit, 1,500. So, he's actually looking to go back and get that needlessly large Rod quite soon here. And there is definitely some camping going on in this top lane against Quas. Quas is out of a turret. And Move was thinking about going down there. Bottom lane, though, with, with the Blade of the Rune King being completed, obviously Piglet, uh, big power spike right now yep. against Alltech and Bunny Fuku. Great spell shield by Alltech there. Yep. All Alltech wants to do is clear the minion waves. He doesn't want to fight Blade of the Rune King Vein right now until he has at least an Infinity Edge on Sivir. Shouldn't have too much trouble with the wave consistently being pushed up into his turret. Easy farms there as we see a few spell shields keeping him safe. Phoenix as well having all the time he wants with a minion wave at his turret. No, oh, there are wards. Keen just deciding not to press up or push up. No kill pressure on that. Again, move. They place that pink ward back down. That's the second or third time they've actually wanted that area in that pink ward. Gives them a lot of control. Yeah, they have pink ward control in both mid lane river brushes, and he's taken out Dominate's control of his own red side jungle. The ward yeah. game is being dominated by gravity right now, which makes it very difficult for I Will Dominate to make successful ganks happen. It's always great when a guy comes in, it's kind of self taught that he does that himself. It's really strange because honestly, Boob looked really bad the first week. Like, his Lee Sin game say. was questionable at best um, with a lot of the decisions he was making. But this week against Cloud9, an early game here against Team Liquid, it looks like he's make, not only making these plays himself, but making them yeah. with the support of his own team, which is quite impressive to see. Everybody, And now they go for Dragon the instant everyone much, recalls. Much more on board from Gravity, as we can see through the calls. Now going to the first objective that they're going to be able to grab. Second dragon of the game. First one having to go over to Team Liquid, but this is going to be good for gravity now. Not too much kill pressure in the bottom lane. Still just farming away between these two. They can pretty much just disengage and be done with the fight in a few seconds from either side here. Bunny Foo Foo just throwing out some heals. Maybe mess up one of Piglet's auto attacks on the minions. What an interesting dual lane matchup down here. Mm -hmm. Move down again. You see a little bit of movement coming down now from Dominate after he leaves Phoenix, helping out in that Raptor camp. I mean, get something in the bottom lane. A lot of wards here for Gravity to know if anything else is coming, so they have the upper hand. Not smart for Team Liquid to fight. It seems like they know that. Yeah, and I wonder, if we're thinking about the team fights, the one saving grace for Team Liquid may be Phoenix's Cassiopeia. Mm -hmm. Rise needs to run into fairly close range to machine gun off his spells, and if Phoenix can ever land a petrifying gaze onto the Rise, especially with the new Rise builds being mainly offensive, uh, Rod of Ages into Seraphs into just Ludens, basically, Phoenix could maybe chunk him down. Keen, though, catches him out of position, 
Oh. Step back. He turned the petrifying gaze. That means only the slow procs on to Keen. Move, allowing him to get the kill once again. He was doing his best to never get a kill, but only get assists. <laughs> he takes half his health bar in damage as Phoenix was wailing on him please, please, while please. doing that. That one actually hurts him a little bit because now he can't get control of that brush. Feels full health, he could have done that. But two kills on a Keen and some mid lane pressure, plus a yeah. great kill set up by Keen. Yeah, set up by Keen. Kind of just walked that one in himself. Phoenix forced to flash as well in the situation, so that will not be up for him. His first petrifying gaze. Not going the way he wanted. Piglet, deja vu here from level one. This time with ultimates. It's a bit more tricky for each team to get into position to do anything they want. That all wears off, and he takes a huge chunk out of Bunny Foo Foo. Yeah. An ulted final hour vein with a level nine Janna shielding mm -hmm. is yeah. something that Sivir and Alistair do not want to fight. So the instant they saw that, they're turning tail and running. The only thing Altec and Bunny want to do in this lane is shove, farm, right. farm, farm, farm. Anytime Team Liquid tries to fight, Gravity runs away. They just need to get the wave pushing in their favor. Dominate finally pushing back here on these wards. Only placing the regular vision wards here as they may not feel comfortable to protect pinks that far up just yet but they are going to be able to gain back a little control on their side of the map. Yeah. And despite moves for assists, Dominate is actually winning the gold game <laughs> against Move. Like, farming the jungle is not a bad strategy, and what Move is doing is by no means the only strategy to play. Uh, he's giving kills to his solo lanes, but as far as being able to maintain that pressure, if Dominate catches him 1v1 in the jungle, Dominate will still win that fight. But now they get to steal blue. Who's going to be seen here actually by Quas for just a second? I don't think anything too much is going to come of this. No real pressure from Keen can come into the mid lane here. Needs to push that out. But now the waves are being pushed up just a bit here by Gravity. And some turrets being down means they can get a little bit more roam on any position they want to kind of strengthen their forces in. Looks like it's going to be the mid lane right now. On to Phoenix. Void Rush coming in as well and that's going to be try it though the helpful oh. dominate he said sorry bro uh, i'm out of here he's gonna say maybe a pop-up that's all he's looking for oh but this will show us how strong rise really is yep a little bit of spell vamp coming in through there he has the flash but he's staying in it if he wants to get over the wall he can it's quas hitting him up right now he gets over the wall now on the back side of the fight bunny foo foo and move are in with quas and he gets bumped out for a second by the headbutt. They are going to finalize the kill on to move Piglet over the wall nicely with the flash to finalize one. Three to one so far in favor of Gravity here. As Liquid make it, take it out. Keen, one more shot. A triple kill for him in the brawl. What a chaotic fight and so many choke points in the jungle. But Gravity comes up big Hunter, and they take more. The turret. No. Hunter. Yeah. User error. The only way Ryze dies right now. Honest, no, honestly. Uh, Gravity playing such a clean game and their advantage is showing through right there. Obviously, Hanser able to sit and spam so much damage out in that fight, but the big winner of that is Keen. Now 6-0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, er God, as Keen would say. Because they... Team Liquid caught Hanser so far out of position, but the damage doesn't arrive until Piglet is there. And then... He condemns him, doesn't get the stun against the wall, and then he has to respect the CC coming through from the rest of Gravity. Nice flash by Haunter yep. and his ability to stay in the fight. And then when the only main damage dealer is Piglet, and you have two tanky damage dealers like Urgot and Ryze in those fights, it's a beautiful skirmishing setup yeah. there for Gravity. And they play that composition just right, despite the heal from Piglet. Since he had the lock on, he can close it down. And then for some reason, Haunter Died of the turret. Wanted to go back home and shop. I was trying to see if he could cast maybe another Q and throw it out anywhere. <laughs> get get his shield up. But he, it just went off and he didn't have enough charges. Oh, well. Unfortunate. Too deep. Go to sleep. 8 to 1 now. 22 minutes in. Dragon. A little lonely this game. A lot of top side map, map action. But he'll be back. One for each team so far. We'll see who he goes to next. And needlessly large rod earlier was not picked up by Phoenix. He went for the Archangel Staff, which is already switched over into a Saracen Brace back on to right. Hanser. And it looks like there'll be a shot. Oh, God. God. oh, he almost killed Phoenix. All right. Wow. But he did. What? Uh, <laughs> even it only so, took four members. He didn't. Yeah. They send four. They don't have the wave in place, so they can't get the turret. That ends up trading a kill on Hanser for a 
middle sixth turret of the game for gravity plus a dragon. Yeah. It was one of those kills that are definitely not worth it. But they they killed him. And now gravity gets their second dragon and the turret. Both teams have had one of those. They went for Quas in the top lane. That was the fault of gravity. Team Liquid yeah. goes for Hanser. That was the fault that time as they lose much, much more than what was lost by the opposing team before. So we'll see what gravity can keep doing with a very nice lead here. 41,500 to 34,000, just 23 minutes into the game. Definitely seems like the change in AD carry and jungle hasn't really affected, or has affected the team positively, but not a negative effect as we see most. Yeah, this week for gravity has been so much different than the gravity we saw in week one, who mm -hmm. looked very lackadaisical and didn't really know where they were going. Uh, this this will still show us a test, though, because the mid and late game shot calling is actually where Gravity used to excel. Because of the 8,000 gold advantage, there's a good chance they can close this out anyway, even without perfect shot calling, because they have a lot of leeway with making bad calls and still having them work out thanks to the tremendous gold leads. If there is an opportunity to be outplayed, though, knowing that St. Fishes and Cop are both not playing on the team and they were the main voices, is one of the major things Gravity needs to overcome this split. Although the early game, at least in this week, looks so good. It really does. Moving Cop doing things that have put the team in a very advantageous position throughout the early part of the game. Usually Gravity was a team that would kind of falter on what they wanted to do or even second guess, not even falter. They would just kind of second guess and maybe not even act on a lot of things in the early game. Now that they have, they have so many more options, and they actually act on those options. Move one after the other has engaged and walked away for his team to secure kills to make sure his lanes get what they need. Yeah. He said he fell behind in CS a little bit, but he's made up for it in the lanes. 6-0 oh, Keen. Credit to him as well. They always say a jungler's job is a little bit easier when your mid lane can pretty much set up the kills, set up too. The kills and hold down. Create a lot Even of pressure. from the very beginning of the game, though, move forcing the flash on Phoenix. Taking the aggression right at Cassiopeia from yep. the get-go. Never never able to get that aggression back. This is also not the type of game Team Liquid wants to be having. 3-0 start, yeah. easy opposition. They want to become more consistent as a team. But they are so far getting crushed. A little trick, the mind trick games to be played now with wards across Baron. Good clear by Bunny Fufu. They have Three pink wards just in that area. Definitely paying off for him right now. Because Hanser does so much damage to this Baron, uh, they can have two people clearing wards, which makes it look like a Baron prep when they're actually already engaged on Baron. Scrying Orb reveals though. Team Liquid going in for the steal. Bunny Fufu hits a special in Piglet. They can't get the DPS into the fight. They zero out Dominate immediately as he goes in for the steal. Quas on the bottom side gets rooted once. There'll be a follow up route to come with that. Actually, nobody can close in on the Cataclysm over the wall, but Quas puts himself into range with a twisted advance. Phoenix flash over into Petrifying Gaze, and they're trying to finish off the members of Gravity. Only move goes down. A one for two there after the Baron. So Gravity had a Baron in week one where they did not commit the right resources and it ended up being a disastrous fight. Yep. This time, Gravity did it just right. They call to burst down the Baron. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone from Gravity runs in to do the Baron. And the most important thing about all this is Keen ulted, I will dominate. The Urgot ultimate is a one second suppression, suppression during its channel. You cannot smite while you're getting Urgot ulted. So Dominate had no chance of actually stealing that one with the timing that Gravity pulled off. They get the Baron because of the gold lead. They also win the fight. And now they have Baron only suffering one casualty. So much control over this game from start to finish so far. Really throwing off teams in the first few seconds is how they do it. Gravity's ability to keep a lead has gone through the roof here in the second week. Now 10 to 3 at 27 minutes in and a 10,000 gold lead. They're looking very good to start pressuring down into the base. They've already taken down the outer turrets here on the map. Very, very strong play. Five more left to go inside the base of Team Liquid, and they are soon to be in the oh. eyes of Gravity. Thank you very much, says Move. Nicely done by him. Yep. <laughs> when you have the tanky solo laners uh, and they also get fed, it is one of the strongest feeling team compositions yep. you can put together. Keenan Hanser, both pretty beefy. Sivir to speed them up. 
not too much Team Liquid can do once they fall behind in the team fights, outside of Phoenix being an absolute god, uh, if he can land a perfect ultimate and then chain yeah. spells on five. But Phoenix hasn't been able to get major items yet. Cassiopeia takes a fair bit of time before she gets the majority of her AP multipliers. Cassiopeia currently at 340 of the 500 maximum stacks, so only sitting at that 10% ability power bonus instead of the much larger one she gets at max stacks. Nope. Gravity continues to control this map. See where they will decide to go. Sivir right now allowing this composition to do so much. Get into the fight anytime they want. Apollo not having, or rather all tech I should say, not having too bad of a game. Apollo just played Sivir as well. Get them mixed up easily. And now it's on to the inhibitor turrets. Dominate in the front, trying to do what he can to at least deter gravity from wanting that, but they don't have the damage. They don't even have the pressure to even flex their muscles and really push gravity off this. Inhibitors there is uncontested. That does not look good for Team Liquid to keep a perfect record going. Yeah, the luxury that gravity have when considering turret dives here as well, there's a 400 health shield Keen can throw on, so they don't always need minions right there taking damage. As well, Alistair along with Dr. Mundo are the two best champions in the game at tanking Nexus turrets. Yeah. Uh, because, or sorry, uh, inhibitor and nexus turrets. Right. Because that laser has 85.5% armor penetration, so the only thing that stops that is a bunch of health, which Mundo can have, or straight damage reduction, which Alistair does better than anyone else. Therefore, if Gravity does want to dive, they can just get the turret aggro on Bunny Fufu's Alistair and sit under the turret, which Team Liquid has to respect, yep. making the turret even harder to defend, and Gravity moves a step closer to winning this game. That's what this game has been about. Game of respect here. Team Liquid always kind of on the back foot when Gravity approaches the turret, approaches an objective, can't contest that dragon. Number three for Gravity coming in just under 30 minutes in the game. And they're looking to put their foot down and almost finish this one out. A lot of items coming in now that are just kind of surplus. You see the Glacial Shroud on to move. He's going to be able to get more defense for himself and pretty much make Piglet's life terrible. They already have a Frozen Heart on Keen along with the Black Cleaver, so... As soon as he's in range, it gets that much harder. Yeah, Keen did an interesting thing there that I don't necessarily agree with. Okay. He sold his Brutalizer to get enough gold for the Black Cleaver, and then he built the Red Elixir, so immediately he will be more powerful, mm -hmm. but his overall six-item build will end up being a little bit weaker. If he would have been able to get a few hundred more gold, he could have done Black Cleaver and then still had his Brutalizer. Right. But he's... He's capped on CDR anyway, so he doesn't need the Brutalizer. Makes sense. It's only a small amount of attack damage, so I can see why he did it. It was just a little strange. You don't normally see someone sell a Brutalizer. <laughs> he does have the Potion of Wrath as well. Looking to do quite a bit of damage with this build, as well as be tanky enough to at least survive the fight so Haunter can go off that desperate power. Towards the bottom, he's kind of playing the role of what Xiao Wei Zhao was doing the other game. Being that solo guy, getting that split push on, and let the last four members push in. No Baron to be had for a minute and a half so far, but Gravity does not need that to keep these lanes going. Mm -hmm. Run away. Run away from Monster's Rise. Well, Gravity. Well, if they get two people on him, Vayne can chunk him down pretty quick. Yeah. Just can't get caught. Oh, yeah, Quas is trying to block right now for Piglet. This is actually nice positioning. Can they do it? Piglet very close to take it on. Hanser pushes him up against the wall. There's the Seraph's Embrace along with the RK Mastery coming out. Oh Keep my that God. shield on. Quas, he goes down to Hanser, and that means Piglet has to run for his life. The Desperate Power is on. He locks him up. He comes up with a double kill, and the turn on the top side is destroyed. Gravity's got the game. That's why on this patch, you have to ban Rise. That was unreal what Haunter just did to Team Liquid. Gravity Absolutely. pushed to the other side, take down the Nexus turrets, and take the game. Not safe for life action, but I'm sure we'll get a replay of it. 14 to 3. The perfect record has been broken in the second week of the LCS Summer Split. Gravity take down Team Liquid to go 3 and 1 on the Summer Split. Jeez. Dominating performance from Gravity. Aside from having Rise, which to many will sully this victory because it's very rare you have a champion as strong as Rise on a patch. He will most definitely be nerfed by the next patch. Uh, but on this LCS patch, the fact that Team Liquid had the opportunity to take Rise and gave it away to Gravity and then failed to shut it down, 
makes the victory meaningful for Gravity in that sense. Uh, but they played incredibly well, moves early game, had 100% kill participation until the very end where Hanser decided to go beast mode on Quas and Piglet. And yep. it was just one of the cleanest games we've seen Gravity play as a team. Not even just this year, all the way back to when they made it into the LCS. And it really strengthens them trying to become that consistent team, not losing to lower teams, being able to take everyone out, and just having consistency overall. Really great play by them. Yeah, that would be the hope for Gravity. Don't see too many teams that can really put a stick in the spokes for them yeah, at this moment. And we asked before the game, you know, Team Liquid, they've had a very easy schedule before right. this game. How strong would they be? And especially playing against Gravity, is this one of those teams you can consider a lower tier team? Or will Gravity now, uh, with Alltech as the AD carry, Cop as the coach, and a new Korean jungler yep. in move, can they actually ascend to be a top tier team? It's very early on in the season. We've only played four games. We haven't even had all the teams play everyone else in essentially the first right. round robin. So we can't make conclusions yet. But what we can say is Gravity looked very good in that game. Their early game yeah. is super strong. They have basically a cohesive strategy. They know exactly who they want to get the kills onto. Move is giving those people the kills. They are controlling vision well. And... You know, they picked Rise. Especially, so to, especially to right the wrongs of coming out with one loss. Not letting that get to them, saying, you know what, we can still play our game. We don't have to adjust to what anybody else is doing. And they have been coming out of the pick-ban phase very, very well. So all the, you know, credit going to the, the coaching staff and the analyst staff. Absolutely. As well. We're going to go ahead and send it over to Dash and Zyrene and Free.